Hello, my name is Kostas Gjellitakis and I work as the technical artist teacher at the Game Assembly in Malmö, Sweden. This video is a part of a larger series of videos called Getting Started with Shader FX for Maya. And in this specific video, I'll showcase how you can animate a texture mask. Now, the object I've got in front of me here is a shader project I worked with. And the intention was to, to showcase the students that you could do a, a cool looking shader effect to use it as a UI element in their games or to convey some kind of player statistics. So in, the students make a lot of games and one of them is to create a space shooter game project. And the intention here was that this could be used as a health bar in their games. So they could make a 3D cockpit in the game and they could dock this somewhere in their cockpit, say down in the left. Maybe something like that, perhaps. And then as the game tracks the player's health, you could feed that into a shader in the game to drive this kind of behavior to get a cool 3D um, you know, health bar. So in this video, I want to focus specifically on this part of the effect. That is to gradually change these health bars to fade them out each one by one as the health drops or increases. But this effect actually is composed of two different parts, if you will. One is this one, and the other one is actually a flipbook animation, if you will. Same as the video I've recorded before, which is called flipbook animation or flipbook shader. And uh, this is actually just a, a flipbook texture, which looks like this. And depending on what the value is for health, it'll choose the correct character to display here. So it handles this one independently from this one and independently from that one. And all of these get derived which character is used here based on this value. But that's, that's not what I want to focus on in this video. You can have a look at the other video I referred to. I've got a copy of this one here where we can just focus on this part. And contrary to the other videos I've done recorded so far in this series of videos, I'll take an approach where I deconstruct the shader here rather than building it from the ground up. Now, before we jump into shader FX, I just want to show the textures that are, are involved. So I have three textures to make this kind of effect. One is the empty health bar, completely empty. The other one is where it's completely full. And notice that the only difference between these is this here um, field color. There's a slight gradient to it. And you could argue that you could do this effect with only perhaps this one and the mask, which I'm going to show you, and then fill here. And that's that's completely true. But if you wanted to have, say, a gradient or some other type of uh, visual effect here, which, which might require a bitmap, you could go with this approach. And lastly, there's the mask texture. And this is which the texture which makes all the magic work, if you will. This texture goes from black all the way out here and then increases by 10% in luminance all throughout this range. So I have full white over here, full black, and this is, you know, 26, yeah, rounded up, 50, 77, etc. So it, it will grow by a tenth of percent. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Now, if we have a look in Shader FX, this, so to get this working is actually probably simpler than you might think. Although there is a bit of the logic to it. It might not be the easiest to to um, figure out yourself. So base shader at the very right. I've gone through that in a prior video which is called bare minimum shader. It's essentially just to get color showing on your object. Vector construct is just to take the RGB and add the alpha component because I it's required to feed a float 4 here. The LERP operator, Linear per Interpolate, is a very useful node which allows you to blend between two different values. So here's my first value and my second value. And the third value is a mix value which decides how much of each of these is going to be used in the blend. So a mix value of 0 is going to fully use the first value. A mix value of 1 is fully going to use the second value. And everything in between there will gradually blend between these. So say a mix value of 30 or 0.3 would grab 70% of this one and 30% of this one. And 0.5 would sit 50% in between. 
0 0.9 would grab 90% of this one and 10% of that one, etc. So the way I've got this set up is I've got my filled health bar here in the first value and my empty one in the second value. Now, I've also recorded another video in this series called Linear Workflow in ShaderFX. But since these are actually color textures, I've gone ahead and checked these to convert to linear space. So you can see that's your uh, empty and the full one. Now this is where the mask comes in and how it's being manipulated. So here's the max te mask texture, which I showed you in Photoshop. It appears as red because it's stored as the DDS type called BC4, which is a single grayscale channel. And since it's a single grayscale channel, it, it's um, retrieved through from the red pin here, and that's why the preview shows red. So the logic here is, I take this one, and these values represent the black is 0, 0.0 up to 1.0, so gradually increasing up to 1.0 over here. I subtract with my health value, that's the value exposed to the user in this case, or which the game logic would drive. So a full health would be a value of 1. So essentially pushing all of this into the negative range. I take the result of this, multiply by 10, and then I saturate this. Because I want to make sure that when the value reaches the LERP operator, I want to make sure that it's in the range of z between 0 to 1. Any value below 0 or above 1 would push the colors to, to more extreme looking colors than, than what I expect from these. So just to show what the effect of the mask does, I've got this one hanging just here, so I can plug it in here to show you. And if I go ahead and change this health value, you'll see what that actually does to the mask. Now remember that this, the black and the white color represents the mix value in the LERP. That is, to what degree do I choose the first or the second um, input, right? So a value of black here is going to choose uh, let's see a value of black what, what i'm actually looking at now is is um this value here right and that value goes over here and a black value would choose full full um, health bar and a white value would choose from the empty one here and since my health is currently at say that i am at 90 uh, percent health I would have something like this, which means that it's going to show white represents empty. So this one is going to appear empty and the rest of them are essentially going to appear full. I think you might see a bit of this depending on exactly where you sit this number. But visually, this is still going to be perceived as full. So I'd, I'd say this is likely down to a precision error in the DDS since it doesn't have the, that perfect range it might actually show a little bit of luminance here but in the end it's not going to matter to to what you see in the end result and as i'm lowering the value say that i'm at 30 percent health i've got the white represents empty right so all of these are going to be empty and i will only have these three seemingly filled here so the way this math logic works to make the the ramp or the mask, sorry, uh, animate like this, is, I'll show you, using Desmos. I love this tool for just showcasing changing changes of value. But here's essentially the same formula or same calculations you, shot, you saw in ShaderFX. There's no clamp or um, saturate, as far as I know, in, in um, Desmos site. So I built my own functionality to essentially uh, do a, a saturate, same as saturate does in um, HLS or in shade graphics. So the S and the parenthesis here represents a saturate. So the innermost parenthesis takes my, this is my mask, the texture based mask. This is the user health. So I take my mask minus health, mask minus health. Then I we're done with this parenthesis. You multiply by 10, multiply by 10, and then lastly saturate, and that is the S. So I've now set up so that I can change the age by using this value, and that is my health bar or my health value. And I'm only interested in what happens between the 0 to 1 range, so within this 
square is the only interesting part for me. Now if you think of these numbers down here, let's see if I can fit all, almost all of this. Yeah, okay, I should be able to see. Yeah, that should be fine. So these, you can think of these increments of 0 0.1 as my visual health bars uh, on, the health, on the actual um, health bar monitor. So one is my 10th health bar, my 9th, 8th, 7th, etc. So this would be the first health bar, second, third, fourth, etc. And this is the 10th and last health bar. So currently when health is at one, when I have full health, all of these health bars have a value of zero. You see the red line is down here. And zero in this case represents full health. As I drop this down to say 0.9, 90% health, my 10th and last health bar went from being at zero and is now at one, which means that it's now fully empty. At 0 0.95, my 10th health bar is at 0 0.5. So it's halfway fading away. My ninth health bar is still at zero. So it's still just as full as, a, as it was before. So far, it's just the 10th being affected. As I lower this value, say down here, I've now got 75% health, which means that my 10th, my 9th, and my 8th health bar are now all uh, fully empty or completely empty. And my 7th health bar, uh, let's see, 75% um, health, yeah, that's correct. My 8th health bar should be at, um, so that's incorrect actually. My 10th and my 9th health bar is. Um, completely empty and my eighth health bar is fading to 0 0.5 which represents 75% uh, health. So this is basically it and as it goes all the way down here last health bar 10% health still unaffected right last health bar is here or first health bar if you will is unaffected at 10% so it's full full completely full and at 5% health that very last health bar first health bar is 50% opacity, so almost dead. And here I, I'm, I'm wasted. I've got no health bars uh, down here at zero, which represents uh, visually a full. So that is the logic of how to do the health bar. I can switch this back, and this one is not necessary. Um, and I can just show it one last time. So 0 0.5 if I type that, and then I can go to 1. And as I gradually do this, I get this kind of result. Now, I'll be honest and let you know that I've created this um, assignment some time back. And initially, I think my, my network here was um, a lot more nodes. And I mean a lot more nodes to basically do the same kind of thing. Looking at this assignment now a few years later and um, ha having a look through again and thinking it through, I realized I'd overcomplicated for myself. So these type of equations, there's, as far as I know, there's no one perfect resource which has all of these clever solutions already. Basically, you have to kind of see the correlation yourself with math and, and try playing around and just see what it does. Even if you're not sure how to get to this immediately, if you can just figure out some kind of logic to drive the value and then start iterating and working from there, you can essentially reach something like this at the end. Um, even when I did this earlier, just, just today, when, when prepping this, uh, I had more nodes. And then after a while, I realized, oh, I can get rid of these. That This is redundant. So um, what I'm trying to say is that you, you, you might not be able to nail um, solutions like this on your very first go. But rather, it's an iterative process where you gradually get to this kind of final solution where everything just clicks and works. So I hope this has been useful. Thank you.